greatest joys in sewing is making something for someone that you love. And if that someone happens to be a little person and you could use something new to play with, why not make this adorable little patch and play house? As you can see, it's very simple and straight line construction. I've added some little embellishments like this button door which can open and close and the window and in fact with embellishments you can do whatever you'd like. You can add trims, ribbons, special fabrics because again the sewing is simple so you can have a lot of fun. And speaking of fun, you can actually make a whole neighborhood of houses that are all buttoned together on the back. You can see I've got a tab coming out of one house and a button on the back of this picket fence detail. And if your baby's too little to play with buttons, you can do all of these attachments by way of Velcro. If you have a little bit older toddler that is ready to start developing those motor skills, you could use snaps, ties, buttons, anything to help them have fun playing with this project. Let's go over the materials for the patch and play houses. I have an assortment of solids as well as printed fat quarters here. And you can feel free to play around with a mixture of both. And in fact, you don't even quite need fat quarter pieces. You could probably use scraps for a lot of this. Maybe an eight and a half by 11 is the largest that you're gonna need. I have my straight pins too, not just for keeping pieces together, but also for marking a few spots. I've got my cutting tools, both my rotary and my grid and my mat, as well as some scissors. I have threads that are just suitable for my fabrics. It can be anything, any color, since we're working with multiple colors of fabrics. And I have a few interfacings. For the base of the house, you do want a pretty heavy duty interfacing. It feels almost like a thick felt, and this one is fusible, but it doesn't have to be. For the house itself and the roof, I have just a couple of um, medium to lightweight interfacings to give it a little body. I have an assortment of buttons here. And again, you can use Velcro if you'd like, but if you are using buttons, make sure you have whatever attachment necessary to create the buttonholes on your machine. I've got the attachment for the Janome 15,000 here, which is really simple to use. And finally, I have some fiber fill to stuff and make our houses soft and fun. Let's start by cutting out our house pieces. I've got this floral for the house, and so I'm gonna cut that. The directions are gonna give you specific dimensions to cut your houses out at. I've already got a clean line cut here, and I'm gonna cut two house pieces that are eight and a half by 11 and a half. And I'm just gonna line up my eight and a half mark on this edge, all the way down with the fabric edge. I'm also going to slide the ruler down to get the 11 and a half mark across the bottom edge. So now we can cut up and across to get our rectangle out. And by cutting this first piece, we sort of have a pattern for any others that you want to do. So I'm going to use this piece to also cut out the back one. And then if you're going to do several houses at once, you might as well use this and cut out whatever pairs of front and back houses you want to do. So I'm going to slide the fabric over and flip it over so I can kind of see the difference between it and the right side. Line it up. And of course, you could just layer up two pieces and cut it once. I'm just walking through the logic with you of cutting out these shapes. So I'm gonna cut again. I need a clean edge across the bottom of this one too. Now we have the pair of house pieces, the front and the back. And if you're making more than one house, you can go ahead and use this template to create as many pairs as you need for however many houses that you're making. So let's cut out the roof shape next. Set my houses aside. Here's my pretty plum color, metallic, for the roof. We're gonna start our two triangular pieces with one eight and a half inch square. Again, we're gonna line up the eight and a half edge with the fabric edge, and then slide down to get the eight and a half inch line here as well. Okay, now we can cut out our square up and across. Get this out of the way. 
What we're going to do next is cut diagonally from this point to this point to get our two triangular roof pieces. All right, look at that. We have front and back of our house. Now what you can do is you can take these pieces and create the exact same four pieces out of some light to medium weight interfacing. Let's cut out the window and the door. For the window, your PDF is gonna ask you to cut it out five and a half by three. I've already got two clean edges, so I'm going to find my five and a half and my three and cut now that they're lined up with the edges. I've created the window and door so that you can fold it over and sew and then have nice clean edges. So this is going to get folded over and sewn before we put it on the house. And for the door, we want the measurement to be six by five. And again, if you're making more than one house, you can do them assembly line style. Do all your doors, all your windows, all your fronts, all your roofs at once. These don't need to be interfaced. These are just going to get sewn and stitched on. We've got the floral and the white fence fabric. Let's lay it out together to save a little time in our cutting because there's going to be several one inch strips. And really how wide you make your fence is totally up to you. But I made mine about as wide as each of the houses. You could also press your fabrics first, but I'm not going to worry about that today. I'm going to start by just giving myself a smaller rough square of fabric to cut the strips from since I'm only using this short ruler here. So I'm just going to cut off both sides and save these big pieces for another day. I'm going to slide over here and give myself this inch marking to start my strips. I've already got a clean edge here. So I'm just going to be repeating one inch strips now. Okay, and I'm going to keep cutting these until I have about eight or nine pairs. Okay. That should give me enough strips to create my little patchwork picket fence. And now that we've got all the basic pieces cut out, we can get on to prepping some of these parts of our house. I've got my roof pieces and my house pieces interfaced on the back so they're nice and firm and have some body. And it's time to sew a roof to the front of the house and a roof to the back of the house. So I'm just going to take the long edge of the roof and the short edge of the house and align their edges and center those extra bits that are coming off. We're going to trim those off later. And we're going to sew with a half inch seam allowance. Okay, we have a roof on our house and we're going to trim out those points in a little bit, but this is exactly what you can do with the other roof and the other house. Let's finish up the little machine prep work we need to do on our door and our window. With the window, we're just going to fold it over right sides together and we're going to sew down each side. I'm going to do a quarter inch seam allowance on this. Okay, now we just need to flip and sew the other side parallel to the first seam. And the door we're going to do pretty much the same way. Fold it on the long side, right sides together but with solid, both sides are the right side. And we're going to sew from the edge to the fold. We've 
done the first part of the house prep pieces. Now let's play with all these little strips that we made for our picket fence. We're going to be sewing them on their long edges, alternating floral with white, and sewing them right sides together with a quarter inch seam allowance. So if you want to use your quarter inch foot here, go for it. We're going to open this up to reveal the right side of this white edge. Now you can do another floral strip on the other long edge of the white one. Okay, there's the first picket of our fence and we can keep doing this until you've got the piece as long as you'd like your fence to be. For the picket fence, we're going to be putting some extra white strips across to make those horizontal support bars on the fence. But to do that, we need to cut up our strip piecing, which feels a little scary. It's not. We are going to cut off an inch and a half across here. So this is a little half mark and then a full inch mark that I'm going to line up here real carefully cut a straight line and then we're also going to take an inch and a half off the other side and cut so the way that this is going to get assembled once I get these all the way apart is we're going to be sewing the strips in between to make a cute little picket fence. We're going to sew those stripped pieces of fence to the horizontal bars that go across with right sides together, quarter inch seam allowances. Okay, and now you can take the next section of strip piecing and piece side by side, again with a quarter inch seam allowance. And we're gonna keep doing this until all five sections are put together. Okay, now we have a full section of fence here, and it just needs a little bit of trimming on those horizontal strips. And then this size piece can be exactly how we cut the backing piece for it so that they're the same and can be constructed. And our roof line now needs a little bit more stitching. We're gonna do a nice stitch detail using some of the beautiful stitches already in this Janome 15,000 to make a little bit of decoration across the top. And I'm gonna select one of those stitches now. I like this scallop design here, but as I feed the roof through the machine, I think I'd rather have it going the other direction. So I can actually hit the mirror image button and it can go the other way, just the way I want it to be placed on my roof. I've intentionally left some excess of roof line here. So you don't have to start right at the very edge. You can bring the roof's edge back behind the needle just a little bit to get started on your first row of decorative stitching. going to keep going in successive rows. I'm just going to use the stitching from the previous row to guide this left side of my foot on the next. And we'll keep going until we've reached the peak of the roof.
Now the only last little fiddly bit left to do the prep work for this house and fence are the little button tabs. And to do that, all we need to do is cut three inch by three inch squares, one to match the fence fabric and one to match your house fabric. We need one three inch by three inch fabric piece that matches the house, which I have. And then I need to cut a piece of interfacing that is three inches tall, but only one and a half inch wide. So I've got that ready to go for the house button tab. I need to do the same for the fence. And I'm just gonna use, again, my fabric as a template to trim out and make one for the fence. So I've got that ready to go. And we just need an extra little piece of interfacing. I'm only interfacing half this button tab because after we sew it, it would be really hard to flip it through the right side if the whole thing were interfaced. I press that little half bit of interfacing on the back of my three inch square. And now I'm gonna fold it over on the lengthwise, the same direction as the interfacing, and I'm gonna sew across the top and down the side to make the button tab. Just using a quarter inch seam allowance. trim off this little corner where I made the pivot turn from one side down to the other and then flip it to the right side you gotta be a little careful you don't bust your seam this is a small little piece and not a very graceful step of it but once you have it all flipped through you can press it well and then do the other one just the same and then it's gonna be time to do the buttonhole in both the tabs. And also, if you've chosen to put a button on the front door of your house and you wanna open it and close it, we can put a buttonhole in the door too. I'm gonna be making buttonholes in the door and both of these button tabs. And for all of them, I'm gonna use the same style button. And this amazing attachment on the Janome 15,000 for creating those buttonholes allows you to use the exact button and tighten it up in the mechanism in the back to hold it firmly. And then it knows precisely the length your buttonhole needs to be to fit that button. And this is where I attach it. This is the foot part. And I'm gonna drop my normal machine foot off and put this one on. ready to go. I'm going to scroll through my stitch options to find the buttonhole. I'm just going to use this basic buttonhole here and now we can get started. I'm going to slide this all the way up because this buttonhole maker starts at the bottom of the buttonhole and moves up. And it's just as simple as tapping to begin sewing. Look at that, it's beautiful. So now I just need to clip out the center carefully between the stitches. I'm just gonna fold it over so I can take a clip. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other button tab and on the door. Now it's time to top stitch the window and the door to the front side of the house. And I'm just gonna do that with simple top stitching because all of our edges of the window and door are neatly tucked and pressed in. Um, the window you can place wherever you want. Because we are gonna do like a little box corner on the bottom of the house that's gonna take up about two inches of it, we do wanna measure the door positioning off the bottom of the house to make sure that once the 
box is complete that the door is going to be sitting on the ground. So I'm just going to pin the window in place about where I want it. Just in the center. And then with the door, I'm going to use my grid to line up two inches along the bottom edge. And I'm going to position this right up against that grid and pin it in place. This way, the door will actually be sitting on the ground. So with the window, we're going to stitch all the way around. With the door, we're just going to stitch down this one side so that your little one can open and close the door. I'm just going to use a really scant seam allowance on the edge here, about an eighth of an inch or even less. I'm just going to keep an eye on it as I sew. For the door, I think I'm going to do a zigzag stitch from the top to down. Awesome. Now we're ready to move on to the construction phase. All right, my final phase of house construction here means that I need to sew the front of the house to the back of the house with right sides together, but I need to leave an opening not only to get the fiber fill in, but also to slip that button tab in. All my button tabs are gonna be on the right of the houses and the buttons that we sew on to connect them to, if we're gonna do one after the other, are gonna be on the back left. So since this is the front right of the house, this is where I'll leave an opening. I'm gonna measure four inches from the bottom and place a pin to mark. And then I'm going to begin my sewing just a few inches above that. It doesn't have to be any specific mark, just as long as I leave an opening of about this much to get my hand in to stuff the bag. So I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the outside. We're on the last edge and that pin that we marked up from the bottom is going to mark our stopping point for this seam. Okay, now to get the box corners, if you've ever made a tote bag that has a box corner at each of the bottom left and right corners, this is just the same process. We're going to pull the front out from the back to create a triangular point and sort of just finger press the seam allowances apart. Okay, just make sure that that seam is down the center of this even sided triangle. And to mark and pin it in place to make sure I can get both box corners the same, I'm just going to put it on the edge of the table here. I'm going to lay the grid ruler on top and I want this box seam to be two and a half inches long. So I'm going to take the zero point here and the two and a half inch mark here and put it at the outer folded edges. 
and I'm going to place a pin. What I'm pinning here is actually going to be my seam line. It's going to be straight across here. And another pin. I'm just going to kind of pop them in like that. And now that that's out of my way, I can pin it all the way. And I'm just going to sew right on that line. Okay, now I can trim off at a quarter inch seam allowance and then repeat the box seam and trimming at the other corner. We're also going to just clip off this little tiny corner up at the top point of the roof. And now we're ready for the fun part. We get to flip this house through to the right side. And hopefully you have backstitched well at the starting and stopping points next to this opening so you don't pop any stitches while you are turning this through. And I haven't pressed any seam allowances open on a soft toy that's going to be stuffed. I don't really find it necessary, um, but I do think that just a simple kind of finger press underneath there to smooth out the seams all the way around. You might want to employ like a chopstick or some little tool to poke out all the corners really well. Cute. All right, so fun to see this come to life. I absolutely love it. And right before we put in the fiber fill, we are going to put a firm piece of interfacing down at the bottom that's cut to size. Just follow your instruction PDF. That's going to go right on the inside. This one's fusible. Again, it doesn't have to be, but I'm going to slip the fusible side down into place so that when it's all finished, we could take an iron to the bottom of it only if you wanted to, to fuse it and keep it in place. But the fiber fill is really going to be what keeps it in place. Stuffing this house or any little soft toy is done best if you just take little bits of stuffing at a time. It prevents getting too many lumps in it. And because we're kind of trying to build something that has an angular structure that we want to sit flat and not tip over too much. I don't want to overstuff it because overstuffing it would make it sort of roundish and um, it might have more of a chance of flipping over and rolling around. But this is a cuddly toy too, so if it rolls around with your little one, then that is totally fine. So I've kind of got the roof stuffed and that's about as full as I want it. Again, it's sort of flat but only a little puffy. It's like a sugar cookie once it's come out of the oven. And then making sure that that interfacing is staying in place on the bottom base before you stick the stuffing down against the corners is good. This actually would be a fun part for your small person to help out as long as the toy is not a surprise gift. I'm going to just kind of test it out to see. I think I want to go a little firmer. These dimensions are the ones on your PDF. There's a couple different sizes that you can do. These are the ones that make the house a little taller and skinnier, but the instructions give you a couple different dimension variations there. That is so cute. So now the last step is to close up this opening. And you could hand stitch it, but I'm just going to take a top stitch on the machine and in that seam, I'm going to include the little button tab down at the bottom edge here. And that's measured two inches up from the bottom because remember we lost two inches with the box corner. That's measured two inches up from the bottom sitting at the bottom of the opening. And we do want that even with any other little buttons and button tabs that go in a row in your little neighborhood. So let's do that sewing now. Okay, we're really not even looking for a seam allowance measurement here. We want to keep an eye on the needle. And I'm going to manually press the needle down into the fabric. And we want it just right up against the edge of that fold. And give it a good little back stitch at the beginning. And remove 
remove that pin and then just carefully continue down the edge of the fold right up next to it. Keep squishing it out of your way. And take your time now because you're going to be going through a lot more thickness with this button tab here. cute. I absolutely love this. It might take some pressing here and there and pushing down at the bottom to get this thing stable. And again, this is the tallest house, but with some neighbors next door and some fences, you can keep it all together. So the only thing left to do is finish your fence section and you can sew the perimeter of that with the opening, inserting the button tab, stuffing, just exactly like we did this. And I've got all my materials here, including my buttons that I'm gonna hand sew on in place for the door and at the back of the next section so that you can link them all together. And once you finish with your neighborhood, it's time to play.